we are joined by the star of the Tudor Dixon show. She is Tudor Dixon, ran for governor in Michigan, now dominating the podcast universe. You can find her podcast if you go search out Clay Travis, Buck Sexton, Tudor Dixon. She is a part of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show network. Now, we're going to get into a ton of things, Tudor. You're up here to do Gutfeld tonight. People can watch you tonight on Fox News. Really fun show. You've been great on that. But let's start here with the two most pressing and important questions that exist in the world today. One, Buck believes that despite the fact you're here with me in New York City, despite the fact that a person was attacked by a shark for the first time since the 1950s in New York City, Buck believes that the beach should be open. That's point one. I want to hear your opinion on that. Point two, do you believe that aliens exist? Uh, And if so, do you believe that they ever have visited Earth? Each of those questions, very important. You were, of course, once a star in a movie star. You were a vampire, right? (laughs) Yes, yes. You you were a former vampire movie star, Tudor Dixon, also Michigan gubernatorial candidate. Both of those questions, important to start with. Which side are you on with both of those issues? I have kids, so I am on the side of closing the beach because I think they come back. I think that once you get a shark that has tasted human blood, they want more. I don't know if that's true, but I think it is. Boom. She's watched too many of those, like five Jaws (laughs) movies, and she's seen all of them, I'm telling you. On the side of truth, justice, and the American way, you're one for one, Tudor. You're batting a thousand here. What about aliens, and what about the potential that they have ever visited Earth? Which position would you take there? So this is a big argument in our house because my husband is way on the side of aliens have visited. and I, I love just, him already. I just feel like we would be much farther advanced than we are if there were aliens that have visited. Now, I will say that I've heard a rumor that if you have negative blood because it's so rare that you have been bred with aliens, <laughs> and I actually do, so there's a chance I'm just hiding it from you. So, so here's the deal. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Can we just, can we, let, let's, let's tally up what just happened I here. know. It's <laughs> Tudor Dixon firmly on Team Buck when it comes to the obvious reality that aliens have not visited the Earth while there have been, you know, human beings to record it. Just putting it out there. Your husband's right, by the way. He's on Team Clay, and he's in the right on this. Okay, so what she's done, Buck, and this is what you're going to, I think, is she has taken the political move. She went half Team Buck half team clay she's attempting to appeal to the entire audience and not picking a side so i will tell you why my husband feels this way so his family is from washington state his uncle one night was outside late at night filmed a some sort of unidentified object flying green lights flashing and we've seen i mean it's fishy you've seen the film yes yeah and this was before people were making stuff up this is this really exists but it could be anything it could be because we have a bunch of secrets that we don't know about. So when you see something flying, how do you know the government isn't just keeping the next weapon from you? That's my. I mean, I'm it was probably like just one on of my the, side. Yeah, it was probably just one of the <laughs> you know Chinese spy balloons that That's the Bidens right. turned a blind eye to because of the millions of dollars collected by Hunter. Like this isn't that complicated, everybody. Uh, Buck, you wanted to ask about dangers in Michigan for uh, for Tudor and anybody else out there. We were doing research during the break. What did you figure out? Wait, tell me again. What was you wanted question? to ask about dangers in Michigan, and we were talking about the oh, fish yes. and everything else. What did you find during your research? Um, th- that that you can swim in the lakes in Michigan and and have no problem. You know, <laughs> apply your apply your sunscreen. There are no major threats, no dangers, no crocodilians, no uh, no sharks. Um, you know, you might get a rogue squirrel here or there, but other than that, you're pretty safe. Although there are invasive species, I looked up. It is the lamprey, which is what I said. The zebra mussels, and am I missing any? Those are there's actually a lot of invasive species, but those are apparently the really bad ones. So where and where I am, I think it's pretty safe, and we should be a tourist spot for the entire United States. But nobody has figured that out yet. I don't know why. But if you go a little bit further north, you do have a bad wolf problem. So and wolves are you know oh I didn't know that violent. I love by the way. Let me, this is an endorsement for anybody out there. And my wife says I shouldn't say this because she's from Michigan. Uh, you've met her tutors. We love going to northern Michigan in the summer. And it is a totally hidden jewel of, I think, America. Michigan in the summer, nobody knows about it. I'm not talking about it's fine in Detroit and like the, the big city area. But if you get north in Michigan, 
it Traverse City, I, I think we're on in Petoskey. Some of these places, guys and girls listening right now are like nodding along. It's one of the most beautiful places in America. Oh, it's amazing. I was just talking to a woman who said she's going up to Traverse City next week. She said, what's it like? I said, you have to understand we have the most beautiful beaches. And we are listed every year for having some of the most beautiful beaches in the country. People don't recognize that Michigan has these incredible beaches. We had my uncle come from London. He came around the corner, saw the beach, and he said, in the, in Europe, we call these inland seas. Yeah. If you have not seen one of the Great Lakes, then you are doing yourself a disservice. You have to see how beautiful the Great Lakes truly are. Fresh water, no predators coming after us. We are might be a little chilly, but you are safe. You are safe. You might right, not be right, safe so from hypothermia. I don't mean to interrupt this meeting of the, of the Michigan <laughs> Tourism Bureau here for everybody who's listening. But I, you said something about wolves. Now I'm going to my other another topic that fascinates me. Have they ever attacked a human in the U.S.? Do we so, know? I, I... A few years ago, they attack. They've attacked people's kids. They go after their wild. So they go after farms. They go after the wildlife up there or the farm animals up there, and they go after your dogs. So we actually had a proposal on the ballot. But see, this is how tricky the environmentalists are and the the PETA people. We had this proposal on the ballot to to stop people from being able to hunt wolves. And down in the lower peninsula, we're all like, oh, my gosh, they were playing these commercials. They're like baby wolves. You yeah. You're like, oh, they're puppies. And then the people in the upper peninsula come down and they're like, what are you doing? We can't even let the kids play outside at dusk. Like, they are a really serious problem. So, yes, they are very serious. They are eating sheep. They're eating uh, farm animals. They're eating people's pets. It's pretty bad. Tudor, you're in Michigan. You're well plugged in. Let's go to the political realm now. What has to happen for the good guys to win in 2024 in Michigan, just like happened in 2016 in your mind? What changed? What should the focus be? What do you think the Republican Party needs to do, regardless of who the candidate is at the top of the ticket? I think what changed is that the Democrats discovered digital advertising and they were able to get their message, only the message they want people to hear, specifically targeted to their phones, to their connected TVs, to their desktops, to their websites. They get their message directly to you. Republicans are still saying, come to a rally, come to a GOP meeting. We are not in the digital advertising space, and it is deadly. That has got to stop. We've got to get some of these folks that are the consultants saying, go on cable, stop spending your money there, get your message directly to the people, because they're not hearing the Republican message. They are being defined by the Democrats. The Democrats are using that digital media to go after the Republicans and define them before anybody knows who you are. Isn't it also a problem, then, Tudor, that with one exception, the large, I know there's truth and there's rumble, but I mean, the major global social media companies, except for Twitter, thanks to Elon, are still really islands of Democrat control. Of course, of course. But so you can actually be, we could have our candidates advertising on YouTube the way that they're advertising against us on YouTube. So you get to those spaces by buying that time. And it's actually less expensive buying that time than buying time on cable news where people aren't watching anyway. Those people are likely voting. You have to get to the people that are not voting. They are winning so big with 18 to 29 year olds. It's because they're not hearing from us. And until we get to their phones, they won't hear from us. This is fascinating to me because you're a mom of four. You're a totally normal person, right? I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Other than the fact that you <laughs> think people with promise. negative blood uh, are potentially <laughs> aliens, which, by the way, my mom texted me and said that she has negative blood. She's O negative. She could be an alien, too. Uh, she wanted you to know. Um, but thanks, we're mom. Uh, yes. They were able to define you not only as like this crazy right wing ideologue, but to your point, I think this is really important. They were able to find one particular issue that they thought a 22 year old cared about and send that targeted message directly digitally to the voter to say, oh, Tudor Dixon believes X, you're in favor of Y. They basically single issue targeted their voters. How much money was spent against you and how successful did you find that targeting campaign really was? Because everybody would have to fight it. So we we were a six to one spent they were six to one spending against us it was pretty crazy we, they had so much money and the, the democrats in general brought about 100 million into the state and the republicans had just under 30. so republicans but the thing is that republicans were spending their money in ways that we should not be spending it wasn't money. even efficient the way you were guys were spending in right your mind. exactly because i think that we're all we're behind across the board across the country we're behind on the digital ads and so i've talked to people about this why do we have 
half and half? Why are we still at a 50 percent margin? It's because the Republican message actually makes sense financially. It makes sense for national security. It makes sense for trade. All of the issues that really impact your life every single day, that Republican message makes sense. So when you're in a red state, you can still win, even if you don't have that machine turned on because the Democrats aren't there. But they're coming. They're getting smarter. They're expanding. You can look and they they define it right out there in the open. We went to Colorado. We did this in Colorado. We took the program to Michigan and they do it through these C4, 503C4 organizations where they come in. We have about 15 in Michigan on the Democrat side. They bring in millions of dollars. We had one in the Traverse City area that we we lost our, our Republican state rep there. They brought in about $10 million for two state house seats. $10 million. That's crazy. For two state house seats and it was a an organization called we the people run by illegal aliens completely all from it, people that had come across the border they wanted their driver's license they told them if you win this race we will we will be able to get driver's license for illegal migrants and so that's how they're doing it they're bringing in these organ they're very very organized compared to the Republicans. The idea of a ballot chase, I always ask people, okay, so what are you talking about? Define to me what that means. Because first of all, the ballot chase, you're way into the process once you're getting to the ballot chase. So what are you doing ahead of time? Because I had ads running against me two weeks before the primary. The Democrats saw what was happening and they're like, we're going to define her. A ballot chase doesn't help you at that point. You've got to make sure that you have the weapons against them right away. And why aren't we trying to define them? because we sure as heck have a lot of information on the things that they've done that have not helped the country and the things that they will do that won't help the country. So why aren't we out there defining them? The ballot chase is way down the line. If you have people telling you, I'm working on a ballot chase, then find the people that are going to help beforehand, because once we get to the ballot chase, we're too late. Tudor Dixon of the Tudor Dixon podcast, which is on the Clay and Buck Network. Clay, aren't you and Tudor doing a deep dive on some guy wrote a book about something? (laughs) <laughs> I have I have no idea. We're doing a show in a little bit uh, where I'm going to talk about this book uh, that I'm glad that you reminded me that producer Ali said I was supposed to mention. Uh, Tudor is going to be on, like I said, with uh, uh, with Gutfeld tonight. I would encourage all of you to watch. And producer Ali said that she wants Wait, me aren't to you say doing, it's your book. Yes. She's, right, okay. I, I'm, I'm reminded. I would have forgotten. After the show, I'm doing a deep dive new book, American Playbook, live streamed. You can watch on my Twitter feed or ClayTravisBook.com. Right after we get off on the air, if people are like, hey, I want to be entertained longer, boom, you'll have me answering questions with uh, OutKick's own Katie McDuffie. You know her, Buck, because you introduced me to her, and that's now why she works at OutKick. I just bring good people together, like Tudor (laughs) Dixon. You should all check out her podcast. Thank you, Tudor. Thank you so much.